Hello all. In this video, we are going to learn about practical transformer on no load condition. So here we have considered a core type transformer and this particular winding we will be calling that as primary winding as we are going to connect the supply voltage on this side. Okay. So this is the supply voltage. Let us assume this as V1. On the other side, we will be having one more winding that is called secondary winding. Usually, here we are going to connect the load, but now we are studying this no load condition. So, that is the reason why we won't have any load on the secondary side. So, when we connect the supply voltage, a small amount of current called no load current will circulate through the primary winding like this. So, why we are saying that as a small current? Because on the other side, load current is zero. Okay. So, when this current passes through the primary circuit, one flux will be produced in the core. And according to Faraday's law, across the primary winding, one EMF will be produced. That EMF is called the primary induced EMF E1. And this flux is going to link up with the secondary winding through the core like this. Okay, so let us assume this flux as phi. Again, according to Faraday's law, we may observe one more EMF on the secondary side like this. As there is no load, this I2 is going to be 0. Okay, so if I connect any load, the voltage across the load uh, will be considered as a thermal voltage or load voltage. So here I may equate that to the secondary induced EMF E2. Okay, so now this is the basic operation of a uh, practical transformer under no load conditions. So, let us discuss in detail. Okay. So, actually the practical transformer, okay, in practical transformer, this iron core, so this entire area will be called as a core. So, this iron core uh, will have two types of losses. One is a hysteresis loss. And other one is called the eddy current loss. Two types of losses will be there. And one more thing, this primary winding will have certain amount of resistance R1. Secondary will have certain amount of resistance R2. As we know, copper losses are represented with the formula I square R. So on the primary side, we have no load current only. So it will be I0 square into R1 because the secondary side was unloaded the secondary side copper losses that is I2 square R2 is going to be 0. So this entire primary current I0 need to assist both hysteresis and eddy current losses as well as small amount of copper losses. Why we are calling this primary copper losses that is I, I0 square R1 as small means because the transformer is under no load conditions it will take very little amount of current. Now let us discuss this no load current. So actually this no load current will have two components. One is called the magnetizing component of current and other one is called the working component of current. This magnetizing component of current will serve uh, for the magnetization of the core, this part of the current will serve uh, to produce the, uh, you know, magnetic field in the core and all. And then working component of current, this component of current will serve for the losses in the transformer under no load conditions. Okay. So, the resultant of magnetizing and working component is nothing but our no load current. I0. As of now, this I0 will be considered as primary current. Okay. So, let us discuss this entire discussion using the phasor diagram. Okay. So, uh, and one more point before getting into the phasor diagram, this magnetizing component of current will be in phase with the flux phi. So, this I mu is purely reactive in nature. So, and it will be in phase with the flux. And this working component, it will be in phase with the supply voltage. This one point you need to remember thoroughly. And other uh, in 
important point is that this these EMFs E1 and E2. So these are the primary and secondary induced EMFs. But the thing is that according to Lenz law, these vectors need to be represented in antiphase with the supply voltage. Okay, so that is because of uh, Lenz law. According to Lenz law, these EMFs need to be represented in antiphase with the supply voltage V1. And while we're doing that, okay, E1, E2, they should be in phase. So these are the two points need to be remembered while we go with the phase diagram. Let us go with the supply voltage. Okay, so this is your V1. Okay, so next, uh, actually we need to start with the flux, but uh, in order to, uh, you know, uh, explain the phasor diagram in a proper manner, I have started with V1. And uh, this V1 will be exactly 90 degrees leading. Okay, so this is origin. This is called flux 5. Okay, we need to start with flux actually. Because this is the flux which is common for both primary and secondary winding. And next, we need to represent this magnetizing component of current. As I told you, so this magnetizing component of current need to be in phase with the flux line. So, like this. This vector is called magnetizing component of current. And which is of which nature? Purely reactive in nature. So, the angle between V1 and this I mu is going to be 90 only. In that way also we can represent. And then what happens? Uh, flux will pass through and all. And uh, you need to represent the working component of current also. Let us represent the working component of current that is in phase with the supply voltage. This is the working component of current. So, the resultant of working component of current and magnetizing component of current will be called as your no load current I0. And we need to represent the EMFs also. Okay, according to Lenz law, both the EMFs E1 and E2 need to be represented in antiphase with the supply voltage. That means if I represent E1 like this, E2 should be in phase with E1. And now we need to consider the number of turns on the primary side. Let us assume that as N1, number of turns on the secondary side as N2. So in this regard, we may have three kinds of probabilities. First one, N1 may be equal to N2. N1 is greater than N2. Next, N2. Sorry, N1 less than N2. These are the three probabilities. So, and we all know about the transformation ratio. I am picking only the number of turns and EMF. So, if I pick it that, so pick that. So, N2 by N1 is equal to E2 by E1. So, that means the number of turns and EMFs, they were in proportion, directly proportional to each other. So, if I consider, let me pick. Uh, E2. So, if I represent E2 like this, what does it mean? The magnitude of, so this is how you need to represent the vectors in the vector diagram or phasor diagram. Okay, so now the angle between V1 and I0. So, the angle between these two will be counted as phi0. This phi0 is called the no load phasor angle or phase angle. So, if I consider that triangle like this, okay, so this vector is called the working component and this vector is called the magnetizing component and this vector is called no load current and this angle is phi 0. So, if I can apply, okay, so Pythagoras theorem, then this I0 square is going to be IW square plus I mu square, okay. So, in that way, you may find the no load current. And in order to get the relations for, uh, you know, uh, I mu and I w, so let us go with cos and sine terms. Okay. Right. So, if I consider cos phi 0, 
okay so it is going to be i w by i 0 so then obviously i w is going to be i 0 cos phi 0 if i go for sin 0 sin phi 0 then it is going to be i mu by i 0 so i mu is i 0 sin phi in this way we can get the relations for working component of current and magnetizing component of current so now we need to discuss uh, the total power input on node okay let us uh, represent uh, if i uh, put a wattmeter here this wattmeter will be representing no load total input power so if if i represent in terms of real power it has to be vi cos phi here the supply voltage is v1 supply current is i0 and cos of angle between supply voltage and supply current here that is nothing but phi 0 and we just saw that i0 cos phi is nothing but working component of current so you can even represent like this okay so and here we need to note one point is that this no load current i0 is very small it is about 3 to 5 percent of full load current rated current so that is the reason why the primary copper losses are negligibly small so hence this power input w0 okay on no load will always represent iron losses iron losses as why, why because we have neglected the copper losses so the iron losses may be represented with the letter pi also okay and these iron losses are constant for all load conditions okay so if somebody asks you to uh, tell what is the iron loss formula it is simply vi0 cos phi cos phi 0 okay because as load increases and all this angle is going to be varied so phi 0 you need to specify in this way we can understand the practical transformer on no load conditions i hope you understand if you find this video as useful please share with your friends and thank you so much for watching this video